time now for our ETF report for ETF trends. Exchange traded funds, or ETFs, have been around for the best part of three decades, but they've been attracting greater investment in recent years. These days, there seems to be an ETF for just about anything. A blockchain themed ETF. Innovation ETF. Thematic ETF specifically. ETF. But what actually is an ETF? It sounds daunting. Here's what you need to know about this market. It's been brutal for ARK. You are in the toughest battle of your career. ETFs are baskets of stocks, commodities, or other assets that pool an investor's money and track a benchmark to measure their performance. This is David Jones. He's our resident chief market strategist here at Capital.com. ETFs, or exchange traded funds, they're like mutual funds, except they're traded on the stock market like any regular individual stock. All ETFs with stocks in their portfolio will begin by following a stock market index. Here at Capital.com, we've examined data on the top 100 most popular ETFs to assess how changing market conditions may affect them. But here's the thing. There isn't just one type of ETF. This asset class comes in a few shapes and sizes. And just so you know, we didn't include leverage ETFs in our research because they tend to magnify returns. There's quite a few different kinds of ETF. There's index-based, sector-based, synthetic ETFs, and then each of these ETFs can be divided once more into passive or actively managed ETFs. Here's a breakdown of the main ones. This is the quintessential passive ETF. It invests in all stocks in a stock market index, like the S&P 500. Its value derives from enabling investors to directly relate the performance of the ETF to the US stock market as a whole. The primary advantage of investing in an index-based ETF is low cost. Basically, ETFs have lower operating expenses than actively managed mutual funds. Actively managed ETFs start off like an index-based ETF by choosing an index like the S&P 500. And this is where an experienced fund manager comes in. Then they begin deviating away from that index to try and achieve a higher return than the index itself. They're not too dissimilar to traditional actively managed funds. Sector-based ETFs invest in a sector portfolio like energy, healthcare, or technology. An advantage here is that investors can simply buy the ETF knowing that the selection of stocks is from their sector of choice. A disadvantage here is that if the entire sector does poorly, then the ETF is going to follow suit. We'll come back to sector ETFs in a bit. There's also synthetic ETFs. Instead of investing in stocks, this type of portfolio invests in derivatives and swaps. Derivatives are complex financial contracts between two parties, which derive their value from an underlying asset. This can be a commodity, a stock, a foreign exchange rate, or a market index. Swaps are slightly different. Swaps are a type of derivative product in which two parties agree to exchange future cash flows from two different underlying assets. OK, so now you've understood the different types of ETFs, what are the current trends in this market? The ETF market has been growing for the past two decades, but it's really taken off since 2012. From our list of the 100 most popular ETFs, based on total trading volume over the past 12 months, the vast majority are in equities. A fifth are focused on bonds. Commodity-based ETFs make up a smaller number still. And these were the five top performing ETFs in the first four months of 2022. All were sector-based ETFs, of which four were energy sector funds. Demand for goods soared after lockdowns eased. And then, of course, the war in Ukraine. They've all contributed to soaring energy and commodity prices. 
So naturally, these factors have benefited energy sector ETFs. That said, there's no guarantee that the same trend will continue in the future. Investing in sector-based ETFs doesn't mean you'll outfox the stock market. Let's take the S&P 500, an index made up of the 500 largest publicly listed companies in the US. It gained 220% over the past decade, whereas the energy sector has only delivered a 70% return. The main reason for the overperformance of the broad US stock market versus the energy sector is related to the rally in technology stocks. Over the past decade, the technology sector has delivered a 450% return thanks to the, to the extraordinary rise in companies such as Apple, Amazon and Netflix. From the same list of the 100 most popular ETFs, these five offer the lowest returns. Two are Chinese ETFs and one broad-based Russian ETF offered weak returns. The war in Ukraine which has encouraged divestment from Russian-owned assets and China's zero-COVID policy, which has slowed the country's pandemic recovery, has put pressure on Chinese and Russian stocks. One ETF that didn't deliver on its hype in 2021 was the ARK Innovation ETF, launched by entrepreneur Kathy Wood. It's a broad-based collection of tech stocks. Kathy Wood, the best money manager of 2020 and one of the worst of 2021. We have been in a terrible bear market for innovation. The ARK Innovation ETF has been, I think, an incredible story in both directions over the last couple of years. Boomed higher on the recovery in 2020, exposure to tech stocks like Tesla magnified its returns, but actually it's massively underperformed as investors became wary about valuations of some of these growth stocks. Over the past 12 months, those who invested in the ARK Innovation ETF lost more than 60% of their original investment. It's an actively managed ETF, an emblematic of the new economy, as it mostly comprises up-and-coming tech stocks. Whether these new economy stocks bounce back soon remains to be seen. So how could traders approach this market? Invest and leave it? Or hire a fund manager? A passive ETF tracks the performance of its index, mirroring their returns or losses. An S&P 500 tracker is a good example of one. Since 1957, the S&P 500 has made long-term annual returns of 10.5%. The Spider ETF has tracked this same index since the early 90s, providing the same returns. But over the past 12 months, the S&P 500 did worse than the three most popular actively managed funds. In recent years, the technology sector has accounted for a sizable proportion of the US stock market's value, but they've underperformed in the past 12 months. So this has caused passive ETFs that track the stock market to underperform with the stock market. Despite this, passive ETFs dominate the ETF market in terms of daily trading volume. In fact, the top three ETFs by trading volume track the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So are actively managed ETFs all they're cracked up to be? A recent study published by S&P Research found that in 2021, almost 80% of actively managed equity funds in the US underperformed the broad US stock market. Over a 10 year period, the proportion jumps to 86%, and in 20 years, it reaches 90%. There is a tiny percentage of funds outperforming the S&P. Active investing is struggling to beat the market. One of the most famous examples of investors beating the stock market is, of course, Warren Buffett. I'm having the time of my life. Shares in the moguls conglomerate, Berkshire Hathaway, delivered annual returns of 20% between 1965 and 2021. Which is more than double what the S&P deliver in terms of annualized return in the same time period. There is another approach though. I ask for cream and you give me milk and water. Sector-based ETFs are like a middle ground between active 
and passive ETFs in terms of how the portfolio is put together. So they offer all of the risks and potential rewards of that selected sector. Energy sector ETFs have outperformed the stock market by more than 50% over the past year. The key reason behind this massive outperformance of the energy sector relative to the broad US stock market is related to the mind-blowing rise in oil and gas prices. Energy prices were already soaring following two years of supply disruption during the pandemic. Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the fallout of our sanctions against Moscow have caused the prices of these vital commodities to surge even higher. Natural gas prices in the US increased more than 170% in the last 12 months and European natural gas prices increased more than 300% in the last year. Of course, not all sector-based ETFs have performed well over the past year. These were the five worst performing sectors. ETFs, like other markets, can endure turbulent times. In fact, investments in ETFs declined sharply in April 2022, with high inflation and the war in Ukraine contributing to reduce demand. Equity ETFs were particularly affected. The ETF market is large and rapidly growing, with a wide range of products for traders and investors. But it can also be a complex market and something that can take some time to get to grips with. Hopefully, with this data and these principles in mind, more traders will find ETFs easier to understand. Thanks for watching. You can read all of our original market analysis and data led journalism on exchange traded funds by visiting capital.com. Our recent explainer video on the price of oil may also be of interest to you. You can watch that by clicking in the box. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to stay alerted to more films on similar topics in the future.